Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. And today, it's our weekend mailbag where you guys ask the questions and I answer them as many as I possibly can in about 8 to 10 minutes. Normally, get to about 8 to 10 questions, so it works out really, really well. We had some really good ones today, and we'll start with Sean, who says, should we be worried about the injuries piling up at this time? How serious are the Sanders, Hargrave, and Barnett injuries? So we talked about this, I think, a couple days ago on my Eagles news and rumor video, and we went through all of the list of injuries, and obviously there are a lot of them right now. Miles Sanders has a lower body, Dallas Goddard, upper body. Boston Scott, of course, has a lower body now, too, apparently. Derek Barnett, lower body as well. I think it's an ankle, and Javon Hargrave have pectorals. A lot of these are serious to the point that they're not going to be, you, you won't see these guys practicing in any sort of eagle drills 11 on 11 7 on the 7s probably for the rest of training camp like the if we see miles sanders at all for the rest of training camp i'll be very surprised but all the players and coaches so far are confident they'll be ready to go for week one. Javon Hargrave said uh, on Instagram, he's like, no worries, I'll be good to go for week one. And each position obviously has their share of backups. Like running back, you still would have uh, when Scott comes back, because his is not very serious. But you still have Corey Clement, you have Elijah Holyfield, you have Adrian Killings and Michael Ward. You have options there at backup running back. And same with D-line, right? You still have Malik Jackson, you signed Vinnie Curry. Like there are plenty of people in place to fill these holes. The bad news is, is that they are piling up. The bad news is they're going to miss a lot of practice time. Like, I think Hargrave needs some practice time alongside all these new people on, on the D-line. Sanders, again, year two, I'd like to have him on the football field. But if they're trying to keep them, you know, you know, extra safe and extra healthy, then I'm totally fine with this. They should all be there week one, and that is the most important uh, factor in all of this. Which injury are you guys most concerned about? Is, is there one on this list that you're most concerned about? I would be most concerned about Miles Sanders, because Sanders, to me, is the most important player in terms of uh, the Eagles offense besides Carson Wentz and maybe some O-linemen. Like, I'm very, very wor – I'm not worried, but I'm very, very – uh, curious on how long the Sanders injury is actually going to be, regardless of what they said about it being week one. But let me know what you guys think down below in the pinned comment. All right, next question here comes from Daniel, who says the Eagles trade Slay, or sorry, Sydney or Rasul, and a second for Yannick. So this, of course, comes uh, via Yannick Ngakwe and how everyone keeps saying that he's going to be traded. At least we thought it was going to be the Jets earlier this week, and then it wasn't the Jets. And now, apparently, it looks like he's not going to be traded. So let me just throw this out there. The NFL.com said this, amid buzz that Ngakwe is about to be moved, Possibly the New York Jets, NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport reported a deal isn't impending. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but as of now, no trade is imminent or close, Rappaport said. And several of the teams that are reported to be involved, including the Jets, are not actually involved. So we've heard this smoke from Yannick. I mean, how many times have I talked about Yannick Ngakwe like, on this show in the past couple of months? Like a billion times because either people ask about it or there's actual news, and yet he's not been traded. So is he a great player? Yes. Would he fit in well on the Eagles defensive line? Yes, he'd be fantastic, especially with the Barnett injury. And they could still trade for him. I'm not saying that they won't. And sure, Sydney in a second, I'd do that in a heartbeat. But is it actually going to happen? Every time we hear this, Rappaport comes out and says, no, it's not. And then guess what? It doesn't happen. So I don't see it happening. Maybe it will, but you guys know where I stand on Yonk and Gokwe. I'm so tired of talking about him. <laughs> I think I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, if there's no legit news from here on out, I'm not going to bring him up unless there is legit, actual, concrete news or evidence regarding Eagles and Ngaku. Okay, fair? Give this video a thumbs up, though, if you would trade for him, because, I mean, like, technically, I'd love to have him on the football team, so give this video a thumbs up. Kristen Stewart says, how many punts think Jalen Rigger will return this year? Um, one or two. I mean, right now they are working him out as a punt returner and a kick returner right now in Philadelphia in training camp. And for all, everything we, we've heard is he looked really good, but he has struggled with fumbles has been his big problem. He, like, is having a big, big problem with fielding the punts. He gets underneath it, you know, he's, he's like, ready to go, and then they're bouncing off his helmet and stuff. And multiple times this has happened just this week. So they have other options there. Obviously, they can work in some running backs. They could work in some other wide receivers to be kick and punt return guys, but they really want Jalen Rager to do it. And he did it well at TCU, 20.8 yards per return those are just punt returns at tcu but he has been struggling with fumbles and that's important to go ahead and note because you don't want that to happen you know a quick change of possession would not be good um during an actual nfl game big play slay says you see city jones winning the cornerback two position even though we all know Maddox is going to win it. No, because we all know Monte Maddox is going to win it. Monte Maddox has looked the best. He has the most experience. And for what it's worth, Rasul Douglas and Sidney Jones have struggled mightily in training camp so far. And I'm bummed because, you know, guys know I'm a Sidney Jones fan. His second round draft pick, you know, was drafted during the Eagles, you know, the Philadelphia draft a couple of years ago. We thought he'd eventually turn out to be a stud. He has not. He worked out this year. He's supposed to get better. And yet here we are. He's probably not even going to be the slot cornerback, which you guys have grilled me on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And you know, I guess you guys are right. I'll, I'll admit it. But he struggled. So, no, I, I'd be shocked if he wins the cornerback two spot. He'll still play because they rotate, you know, cornerbacks in there every single year. But 
Mm, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. What is looking good, though, is our training camp coverage. I think we've done a great job covering training camp. Like this video if you guys agree, but also subscribe because the more subscriptions we have, the more videos I can push out, right? I can only do so many a day, but the demand's there. We'll keep pushing out more and more Eagle training camp videos, and the demand is going to be there because there's like 13,000 of you guys who watch these videos on a given basis. I appreciate each and every one of you guys, by the way. Um... I think Hargrave will be 100% by week one. Yes, we talked about this. I think Hargrave has the best shot out of Barnett and Sydney and uh, and Miles Sanders. If I had to pick one who will guarantee to be ready to go for week one, because a strain on the pec is is a lot different than like an ankle tweak, because, you know, you don't necessarily, I mean, obviously you use your upper body on the defensive line, but it's different than having to cut and move, and, you know, the, the lower body stuff is a little scary. So I think Hargrave has the best shot at being ready by week one, but they've all said that everyone's going to be good to go by week, week one, so... You know, it happens. If you want to get a, a sweet Javon Hargrave jersey, speaking of that, I mean, we, there's a bunch of jerseys right now that are all available uh, at chatsports.com slash Eagles jersey. Some great deals over there. Check them out in the link down below in the, excuse me, in the, the uh, description box. Obviously, you get a Hargrave jersey. You get a Carson Wentz jersey. They have a ton, like every single player, at least every single good player in Philadelphia, all have jerseys available right now. Pick one up at chatsports.com slash Eagles jersey. Um... Let's see, Mateo says, are they wearing pads and really hitting? Yeah, today, so they've been wearing pads all week. Today's their first day of live hitting. So they've been doing 11 on 11s today, and they are actually hitting each other and, and, and playing football, right? Like, it's exciting. And this is where you separate men from, 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 from the boys, right? So uh, Doug Peterson said the other day that there are some young players that need today, that they need the rest of this week to see, hey, can you take a hit? Because you, you could get hit in college, you know, it's like, okay, let's, you know, a third string college linebacker hits you, it's tough. Can you get hit by an actual NFL linebacker? Can you get hit by Fletcher Cox and get back up? Today's a big day, uh, or I guess yesterday and today, you know, they'll be doing it for a couple days now. But uh, yes, they are really in pads and they are really hitting and it started yesterday and will continue for the next couple of days. Um, where will the Eagles offense rank this upcoming season? Um, I, I think top 10. I think it will be a top 10 offense. And Daniel Jeremiah, who's been covering Philadelphia uh, and doing some work there for the NFL Network, has said the Eagles are going to score a ton of points. And I would agree. They've looked fantastic so far in training camp from a wide receiver position. We talked about that a couple of days ago. But there are some good football teams out there. Last year, I mean, it was Dallas, Baltimore, the Bucks, 49ers, and Falcons who were all top five offenses. And you keep kind of going down. Philadelphia finally squeaked in at 14 behind the Texans, the Titans, and the Raiders. So a 14 is not bad. A top 15 offense is obviously a playoff offense, as we saw last year. But my hope is that Philadelphia can be a top 10 offense. And I think they have all the tools to do so. You know, I mean, injuries are one thing. But Carson Wentz again in another year. A healthy offensive line. Obviously uh, a stable of running backs, including Miles Sanders. And targets for him is massive. So, yeah, I think absolutely the uh, the expectation is to be a top 10 offense. I think they will do that 100%, barring injuries. And even then, Carson Wentz was fantastic throwing to lawn chairs and, you know, office furniture last year at wide receiver. So, hopefully they'll be good to go. There you go. The all time we have for today here on our Philadelphia Eagles uh, mailbag video. We do this basically every single week. Sometimes one, sometimes two. So, if you're subscribed, you can leave a comment down below. Use the hashtag Eagles and more than likely, probably next week, we'll get to one of your questions. But I love this kind of stuff because I like to just get into the nitty-gritty and update you guys because I'm doing all the studying and all the work. That way you guys can benefit. Just sit down, watch an 8 to 10 minute video and see what the update is on the Philadelphia Eagles. But it's, it's good. Injuries, you know, we'll see what happens. But it's good news so far from Eagles camp. So hopefully that continues. All time we have for today here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. I am Thomas Mott as we go ahead and sign off. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.